Smoke a purse so sweet with Hot Thoughts TV. Y'all know what the fuck we doing, man. It's Hot Thoughts TV. Niggas hot in the beach, man. I'm smoking a purse so sweet with Hot Thoughts TV. You got niggas out here, bro. They just doing drugs, bro, and thinking, never thinking about they gonna get off. But sometimes God, and sometimes when God take you away, that's not death, it's not a punishment, bro. And that's what they don't understand. Death is not a punishment. God say, bro, you ain't do what you have to do here. And it's time for you to go home before I let you destroy yourself. Lord. So having your life is a fucking privilege, my nigga. Understand that. Because at the drop of a, <laughs> it's over. All your ambitions, all the things that you thought you could do, you can't never do it. So why would you spend time killing yourself? People just think killing yourself is about doing drugs. No, killing yourself is about the toxic thoughts you have in your head too. You killing yourself, bro. And see, and, and, and they walk around, they want to glorify this shit, that's cool. But I'm not going to, bro, I ain't going to lie to you, bro. I was sick two weeks ago, bro. In a motherfucking, um, key talk. Key talk, we and key talk, we talk a little bit. He and uh, he a nigga that responds back. I ain't gonna act like a nigga, my homie. He a nigga that respond back. So, nigga, I'm sick. You gonna ask, I get sick because, bro, big boy, I can't drink sodas no more. I can't do none of that shit because the acid fucked up my stomach. And when I drink too much soda, it's over for me. Or when I smoke too much weed, it's over for me. So, you know what I'm saying? So, one of these days, it's over. Key talk, blow my shit up. Say, man, what the fuck you want, bro? Like, so I look at my phone. He said, bro, you okay? I said, nigga, I'm sick as fuck. He said, nah, nigga, somebody said you got killed, bro. I said, what? I said, what? Mm -hmm. Man, I said, bro, I almost know what you're talking about, bro. And, and I stopped responding. You got niggas out here that see this shit and saying niggas getting killed, bro. Don't wish that on me, because I'm not. I'm my L7, bro. I'm not in the street at all. I don't want to be a part of that shit because I was out there before, bro. I was on the run for three years in South Park, standing behind a precinct with my baby mama, man. When I came home, I was on house arrest for four fucking months, bro, after serving two years, bro. A nigga tell me, you can't do two years on organized crime. Yes, the fuck you can. If you got a lawyer that got a mouthpiece and it depends on what type of trouble you was in. I ain't never get, I was on the run. I was a felon was on the run, but I was never convicted of a felony, bro. But when they finally caught me, I got convicted of four felonies at one time. So what that made me, that made me a first time felony, but first time felony, but I got four, four felonies. So they treat me as a first time felony. So they gonna smack that, bro. What people don't know about the legal system, if you ain't doing nothing crazy, bro, they treat you like you suspended in school. You come in, we gonna, we gonna give you a sack. Sack is probation. <laughs> we're gonna give you sadness probation. When you fuck up and sack, bro, motherfucker, we're gonna suspend you for three days. That's the kind of jail. And then when you fuck up from being suspended, they're gonna expel you, meaning you can't go to school no more. That meaning that you gotta go to prison. You know what I'm saying? I was a fucking crash dummy, bro. Robbery, shootouts. I'm lying? No. I've been doing this since I was 16. So when, when motherfuckers be talking to me online, she be laughing. He said, the all you would have, she said, the all you would have pulled up. The all you would have, like, if we're going to shoot it, we're going to shoot it. But now I'm realizing, like, how the fuck is I'm infatuated with niggas so much that I go to jail? Mm -hmm. I, that's infatuation. Mm -hmm. And niggas don't see, they don't see that I'm infatuated with niggas so much that I'm about to risk my family and everybody. You don't have to jack out for the rest of your life because of this nigga. That's fucked up. Just think about it. I'ma sit in the cell, can't fuck no hoes, can't smoke, you smoke weed or whatever you get in the way, but you can't do it no more over a nigga. And niggas are dying. You know the sickest thing ever, bro? When we, bro, we all knew that my three died over a female, but we just didn't know the severity of it when they started telling the story. Sometimes, bro, I don't listen to them, them, them hood bloggers, bro. I watch the news. Cause I watch what the cops say. Mo three? Died because a nigga was really jealous he was fucking this bitch. Mom three died because a nigga was jealous because he was fucking this bitch. And I started, and I started playing it in my head now. I started playing it in my head and I said, okay. I didn't been there. I ain't gonna try to blast my baby mama, but my baby mama got snatched in a play away in my face. And I was in my feelings. 
And my baby mama used to call myself being bald. I used to beat this nigga ass every time I like. I used to be in my feelings like that. I used to whoop this nigga, man. And then one, I mean one day, bro, because I, I used to lose my shit. I used to ride my uncle. My uncle used to work in the weather center, so he used to make me wait on the bus for him to get in the truck. To get in the truck. So when we get in the truck, he said, man, stop interfering with a nigga in his side hoe, bro. A nigga kill you over his side hoe, bro. That's his hoe, bro, and let that hoe be. And when he told me that, his, my aunt would be furious if she found out the way that he told me. But that's how he told me. And I had to let that shit go. Because I'm about to keep on, about to fight this nigga or kill this nigga over a female bone, she gonna be fucking the next nigga. But this nigga got so fucking mad, and I understand by being in my emotion, my whooping this nigga, I can understand what really transpired. That trap boy beef and the entertainment shit influenced that shit a little bit? Yes, it did. But it's, from listening to that story, trap boy Fred is not involved with that shit. Yellow Beats is not involved with that shit. Monty was fucking that nigga bitch and was singing in her ear and he found out about it and got the drop and killed that nigga. That's believable. Cause by Mo3 dying, that shit was so fucking random mm -hmm. within itself. Man, I think y'all need to be like the Texas TMZ because Texas be like Dads be having some exciting shit going on, bro. And I just be watching it because you, it, it's so much shit that you can critique about what's going to go wrong or what's going to happen. Because they very messy. They very emotional out there. I'm not talking about every Dallas nigga. I'm talking about the dudes that want to put on the cape and act like superheroes and act like actors in front of the camera. I ain't talking about the niggas that's in the street. See, it took a long time for me to get in front of this motherfucker and talk because, man, I was afraid of being indicted, my nigga. So I gotta, I had to educate myself on what to say, watch who I do interviews with, because I don't want to have some shit that they can pull up and try to convict me. But like, I'm really in the street though. Y'all knew Mo3 got shot at in Houston? He said he got shot at in Houston? He killed two people in Houston. Oh, Mo3 did? Yeah, V-Live. They tried to kill him in V-Live. Nah, I didn't know that. That's a fact. Get a phone call. We about to be in my partner about to go see the nigga. Shit, 20 minutes go by. Female say, y'all better not pull up up here. Mo 3, did they say Mo G? Mo 3 went out like a G. They start shooting at him and he killed two across the street. People was like, this ain't no fake ass shit when I'm saying this for real. I told my auntie today when that nigga got shot on the fucking freeway, my nigga, I got actual footage. I text me, I say, bro, that ain't bro. They said this thing, I just, nigga, I just passed it, bro. Oh, I'm being for real, though. Mm -hmm. This nigga said, I just, bro, I just passed up on three, his name fell on this freeway in Dallas. Because I, I fuck with niggas in Dallas. I say, bro, there ain't no motherfucking Mo three. Bro, I caught one of my other pops in there. He say, oh, it's that nigga. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh. Who want that nigga dead, bro? And then they, and how messy the blog was on. You never heard about the Houston shit. You never heard about the Houston shit. That's factual. That happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to talk too much, bro. Like, nah, you good. I, mm -hmm. I was thinking, though, you know how Mo3 on that last album that he just dropped, you know, he had a song with, what is it, OG Bobby Billions, I believe, that outside, man, he could... He supposedly is doing the song with Trap Boy Freddy as well now. What's your what's your take on that? You feel like that's you know it's business is business. Or? Business gonna be business, bro. Nobody can be in their feelings, bro. You know what fans problem is? Fans want to take their favorite artist ops and say that that's their ops and I don't got shit to do with them. If that nigga OG Billions had a personal relationship with Mo Three. Kyler Mo3, bro, and they going to go fuck hoes together and they making money together. I can understand that. If that nigga just made music with that nigga, bro, that nigga is not obligated and don't owe nobody shit. Is it foul in the way? It's foul to the real people, but in business, foul shit don't apply when it's business, bro. So you got to be, and then you got to understand too, you dealing with a whole bunch of people that don't know shit about business. So they so personal, I feel like it's 100 because Chapboy Freddy could have told that nigga too, like, 
I don't want to do no motherfucking song with you. You did a song with that, like, you know what I'm saying? But he didn't. He worked with the nigga. Then you start hearing the other town nigga that got on Rainwater ass at the zoo. You hear his story about what's going on, bro. Like, nigga, come on, bro. Like, nigga, that shit is not personal. That shit is not personal. Like, and you can't involve your feelings with the other nigga decisions anyway. So no, I mean, that nigga ain't wrong. Niggas, bro, that nigga cut it, bro, cut it TV. A nigga on, bro, these East Texas niggas be doing their thing. They like yelling and calling niggas hoes and nobody.